Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and install a library called ng2charts. And we're going to use this to actually generate charts for our application and make it a little bit easier to set up with our existing Angular project. So ng2charts will provide directives for Chart.js. And Chart.js is a chart visualization library that we installed earlier at the beginning of this project. It is, it is a, it's a full featured charting library and it's a full featured charting library. And I really like the way that the charts in this, and I really like the way the charts that the library generates look and how easy they are, relatively speaking, to get up and running. So Chart.js is a full featured charting library. And I really like the way that the charts look in this library, as well as how relatively easy it is to actually feed data to the various types of charts that it provides. In fact, if we head over to chartjs.org and we just take a look at some of the samples, we can see some very basic bar charts. We can see a number of different examples of types of charts that chartjs provides. So we'll take a look at some different types here. I'll just go ahead and open up a few different types. And so we can see that we can create bar charts and line charts different types of area charts, you know, underneath a particular boundary, scatter charts, radar, basically any type of standard chart that you might think of creating Chart.js most likely can support. So that's Chart.js and ng2charts now just allows us to, and ng2charts allows us to basically just use Angular directives to generate these charts. Now you could use vanilla Chart.js and select the particular canvas element where we'd like to draw the chart if you'd like. But since this library is available, I'd like to just go ahead and use it and show you how you can use it um, in our application here. But since this ng2 charts library is available, we will examine how to use it as a third party library. So we're going to go ahead and install it by running npm install ng2 charts dash dash save to save it in our project. Okay, and with that complete, you can see that the documentation here is also telling us to install Chart.js, which we've already done earlier. So if you didn't do that earlier, you wanna make sure that you take care of this now. And it's also telling us that we need to embed Chart.js in our application. So the Angular CLI will be take, taking care of this for us if we revisit uh, the code and we take a look at our Angular CLI.json file. and we take a look within the scripts array here, we have a reference to chart.js. So that's all good. Now what we'll do is, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a quick commit here. And we'll push this up. Okay, and now let's take a quick look at how to implement these charts. If you take a look at the, the docs here, basically it's showing us that we need to make sure that we import the charts module in our app.module file. And then we're basically just gonna use standard Angular syntax here in our templates to create canvas elements with this base chart directive here, and then provide it a number of different inputs. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a chart with some mock data, just so that we can kind of see how we can get it working. I'm gonna close the browser for now, and then I'll bring our page back up. So this is still running on localhost 4200. And we have this sales component. So what I'm gonna do inside the sales component is go ahead and inject a bar chart component. So in fact, let's go ahead and create the components for our various charts. So for that, we can NGGC again, and here we'll generate a bar chart. And I'll do the same to create a line chart component. And then finally a pie chart component. Okay, with that set up, let's head back into the code. And we can see that we have some new components here. So we've got bar chart, line chart, and pie chart. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a new folder to hold our various charting components. 
and I'm just going to call that charts. And now we'll move each of the chart components that we created into the charts parent directory. Okay, with that set up, let's head back into app.module.ts and we need to go ahead and correct the path to the, the charting components that we just created to include our charts subdirectory. Okay, we can see that the CLI also brought in each of these components among our declarations automatically. So now what I'm going to do is take a look inside our sections directory and then within the section sales directory we're going to actually visit our section sales.component.html file. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just go ahead and remove the placeholder text here as usual and I'm going to go ahead and make a class section container here. And then in fact I'm going to make use of a bootstrap for component called cards and what we'll do is we'll have a div of class cards that'll be a class that we custom style but then we'll implement a bootstrap div class card deck and we should visit the bootstrap for docs very quickly just so we can get a sense of how this card deck and the other card components are working so we'll head over to the documentation and then we want to look at components and cards. So cards are kind of a nice small type container that we can use to hold some content. And in general, they're a nice layout to hold content where you're going to have sort of multiple types of the same element um, within a section. So in our case, we're going to have multiple charts. And so the card deck is going to help us kind of set that up rather nicely. In fact, if I just control F here for card deck, we can see that card decks uh, basically provide us with a nice layout for a set of cards that are not attached to each other. We can see that basically this is going to provide us with a nice set of equal width and height cards that are not attached to each other. So across the top of our page here, what I'd like to do is create a few cards that hold charts and then a row beneath it holding a larger chart. So we'll have a div of class card deck, and then we'll have a div of class card. And I'm going to apply a box shadow to this. I'm also going to apply a custom card theme that we'll also create some CSS for. And then within a card, we have the ability to provide a header and a body and a footer, much like uh, in previous bootstrap versions where we have panels. Likewise, we'll have a specific card header theme as well. And so within the header, I'm going to have an H5 element. And we'll just call this card daily orders. Next, we'll have a div with class card body. And it's within the card body here that we'll actually render our bar chart. So we'll notice the selector for this will be app bar chart. And we can confirm that by taking a look at the bar chart component that we had just generated and seeing that the selector is, oh, that's the line chart, but seeing that the selector for the bar chart is app bar chart. Okay, so. As we move forward, we'll also create two other cards to go across um, inside of our card deck, if you will, here. But for now, let's just take a quick look at our page. Okay, and it looks like we're getting some type of rendering issue here. So what I'm going to do is just right click and select inspect and then check out the console. And you can see that we have a template parse error unexpected closing tag div. And we can see that this is coming from the section sales component at 13. So let's just take a look back and uh, I see so this div didn't uh, somehow I missed uh, applying the class here. So this should work. Let's go take a look and yeah so we get a card out to the page here. Um, the text on the background is white so we're basically uh, we can still see that we have this daily orders heading and the bar chart works coming from our bar chart component. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and theme this card a little bit so that it matches the rest of our app. And since that style applies globally, a good place to put that would be in the global styles.css, which is in the root directory of our application.
So I'm going to have this card theme class with a dark background color. We'll set the border to none. And the border radius to two pixels. That's going to give our card a bit of a rounder look at the corners. And then I'm going to provide a card heading theme. And we're going to provide a border radius on the top right and left of the heading of 8 pixels. And then we're just going to give it a little bit of padding here as well. Next we'll fill out the card body theme. And we'll give this another dark background color here. Then we have this class cards that we put all of our cards in and I'm just going to set this to a flex display with a flex direction of column. And then finally I'm going to define a class section container which is another custom element that we, which is another class uh, that we defined on a div earlier. And this is just going to be, to be used to apply a 30 pixel padding to each of the sections that get rendered in our sort of router outlet area. Okay, so with that saved, let's go ahead and visit the page very quickly. And so now we have a little bit of a nicer looking card here. So let's go ahead and create a bar chart. 